Welcome to the Mind Lab Show. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks, and information you need to start your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den. Let's get digging. And I found gold, I found gold, swing and may detect This week on Gold News sees the gold price still hovering around about $2,860 an ounce Australian. That's a fantastic price for gold, although we are expecting with the US elections and an increase in coronavirus cases in Europe that we could possibly see it rise a little higher yet. We're still aiming for our $3,000 an ounce Australian before the end of 2020. Go the gold price. The Miners' Den finds competitions are going along great. We're seeing lots and lots of new entries coming in and even some who are taking photos of their finds from their own backyards during lockdown. We'll be announcing the first of our winners this week. The Den, the Miners' Den social site where you can drop in and have a chat about anything to do with prospecting, your finds, get a bit of advice. Corey, who has been doing a fantastic job running this, is always available there to answer any of those questions. And as we move through with future shows, you should see us being able to offer some exclusive deals via The Den. For more information about this great social hub, check out our Facebook page. For those of you who haven't entered as yet, there is still plenty of time to get in on our fantastic giveaway of a MindLab E-Track coin and relic machine and a GoFind 22 for the kids. There are multiple ways to enter and multiple entries gives you more chances of getting this great kit. Check out the Facebook page or our website for more information. I look forward to seeing your fantastic entries as we get towards drawing the winner. This week, with the virus still raging around the world, it's good to see that people all over the world are getting out to find their own little bit of colour. In Scotland, for example, there's now a mini gold rush going on, and this is generating lots and lots of interest, lots and lots of people getting out away from the big cities where the virus is, and they're even finding some tiny specks of gold. The store update this week sees the stores in Adelaide, Bendigo, and Sydney trading as normal, except in Victoria, our Bendigo store will be closed on Friday for the grand final holiday. In other news, it's also going to be fantastic to see the Melbourne store is able to reopen at the latest from the 2nd of November. So for all those people who are waiting to get in, pick up your machines from us in our Melbourne store, not too long to wait now. If you're local, you can still click and collect. And if you haven't got in and got your name on a machine, get in very quickly because they are still selling like hotcakes as we look forward to coming out of the restrictions in Victoria. Well, that's the gold news for this week. Let's get on with the show. This week's viewer giveaway is the full set of nine John Tully gold prospecting maps from around central Victoria. This fantastic reference guide is a great way to find places to go out and hunt for nuggets throughout the central Victorian region. All you have to do to be in the winning for this set of magnificent maps is to drop a comment in the feed, say hi, or ask a question. And Live Dave will draw the winner at the end of tonight's show. This week, our regular top tip segment has been moved aside for a special presentation on one of the only pieces of technology developed specifically for the Victorian gold fields, the puddling machine. Let's see how it worked. Where we are now is an original puddling machine that we've attempted to restore over the years. Burris Smythe, in his book, The Gold Fields and Mineral Districts of Victoria, spoke of the number of puddling machines that were working the Bendigo field in 1860 at 1593. Only a few years later, in 1868, 
that number had dwindled down to 433. Each of these puddling machines to operate successfully would require the labour of somewhere around about three to four men and two horses. The puddling machine here would have cleaned the old timers that bring their wash dirt from the gully or up the gully and back down to this puddling machine. They might have brought it in in say a dray or just in a plain old wheelbarrow. They then put the dirt into the puddling machine here and they would use the dam here and possibly a whip or a canvas bucket to fill the water into the puddling machine. The puddler had the horses one on either side with a cross beam that went across here and a scarifier that dropped down in the middle here. As the horses walked around, it broke up or puddled the clay, releasing the gold. Now once the horses had walked around and puddled the soil for maybe a day or a day and a half, it would then be time to drain out all of the excess water and the slurry out through this section here, which is where they drained the puddling machine. Once it had been drained, they would then go back over to our dam with their whip and reload the water back in to continue the puddling process. Once the puddling machine had been drained, it was then up to the guys to come in with pitchforks and throw out some of the larger rocks and things. They would then use their whip and bucket, the canvas bucket, and refill the puddling machine with more water and the process of puddling would continue. Once the load of pay dirt had been sufficiently puddled and the larger rocks removed, it was then able to have a fine slurry left in the bottom of the puddling machine. This was the concentrate that will hold all of the gold. It was removed from the puddling machine just with shovels and it was taken then to our water source, our dam, and it was put through a cradle or a rocker box or just simply panned off to recover the gold. The puddling machine was the unique piece of Victorian technology that was developed on our gold fields. For this reason, puddling machines and their sites are protected under Victoria's heritage laws. There is no fossicking within 10 metres of a puddling site so that these can be left and preserved for future generations to see the way history was created back in the 1850s and 60s. This has been The Puddling Machine as part of The Mind Lab Show. This week's product spotlight is the clip-on angle pick holder from Miner's Den. This great piece of kit is a fantastic way to carry your pick whilst you're wandering around out in the gold fields. It comes in both left and right handed for different prospectors and if you're selecting a pick holder, make sure if your detector is in your right hand, you pick your pick holder for your left hand side. This way it keeps your pick away from your detector's control box and a little bit further away from the coil. To fit this to the existing ProSwing 45 harness or your GPX harness, just simply slot the metal clip into the harness like so. The pick holder is now secured. All we need to do is grab the pick and slot it in as we have there and your pick holder is now ready to go. You'll also notice with this fantastic pick holder that it actually angles your pick backwards and away from your leg. So as you're walking around, you're not having the pick banging against your leg. Miners Den also have an added bonus of throwing one of these clip-on angle pick holders valued at 35 bucks in for free with every Pro Swing 45 harness purchased from the Miners Den stores. This is a limited offer at the moment, so get in now, grab your Pro Swing harness and the fantastic clip-on angle pick holder. Week three, research. One of the most important parts of prospecting for gold is research. There are so many different forms of research we can do to hopefully narrow down the hunt for gold. The old timers found a lot of gold bearing ground. We all know that, 
but they also left behind plenty of clues, evidence, information, and believe it or not, gold. They certainly did not get it all. There were plenty of successful miners in the old days, and there were also plenty that were not. In my eyes, it really wasn't much different to today. We just play a slightly different game. Technology today has certainly given us the upper hand and that combined with the information they left behind makes it very possible for any prospector to find a virgin patch. The exact same indicators the old timers look for are still there. They certainly didn't go out and dig a hole just to get a handful of blisters and hope for the best. If the ground didn't show good potential, they moved on. Today, we get to cut a few corners and generally start our hunt on proven gold bearing ground. Do your homework on the particular area, then do the groundwork. And don't be afraid to branch out from the inevitable in the search for untouched ground. The patch is really throwing out some chunky gold and I'm becoming very confident that I haven't seen the best of it. Enjoy the photos. Regards, the Phantom Prospector. Tonight's quick tip is all about the tone on the MineLab SCC2300. There's an option of two tones, a high pitch tone, which is the default setting, and also a lower tone, which I'm going to show you how to change to. This is the high tone. I'll show you how to change it to a low tone. Turn the machine off. Now, this time when we turn the machine back on, we are going to hold our finger on the volume button and we're going to turn the machine back on. Hear the difference? Now we have a low tone. And some tones suit people's hearings better than others. So that's why there's a, a couple of options on the 2300. And very simple to do. And that stays as the default setting now when I turn it back on next time. This week's store offer from the Dens is the CTX 3030 coin and treasure detector. This fantastic unit is on special at the Miners Dens for the month of October at $2,595. That's a $100 saving. Of course, if you get stuck, the guys in the stores use these machines and are quite able to assist you in getting up and running once you've purchased your unit. They're a fantastic unit smashing price got some in stock now so my lab ctx 3030 hundred dollars off at 2595 this week's miners den store special this week's gold hotspot is beechworth before the gold rush the area was used for grazing and was known as Mayday Hill until it was changed to Beechworth in 1853. Gold was first discovered at Reeds Creek at the present site of Beechworth in 1852 by a shepherd named Howe and his companions. They tried to keep it a secret and didn't even try and claim the reward. But it became public knowledge and within 11 months there were over 8,000 prospectors digging on the field. The area soon changed from a rugged and remote area to a thriving regional centre. In the first four months of 1853, the gold escort took out 120,000 ounces of gold from Beechworth. By 1857, more than 20,000 people lived in Beechworth. It was a prosperous town with many banks, churches, schools, shops and hotels. There was also a hospital and a prison. Being such a prosperous centre meant that many beautiful buildings were built and 32 nationally significant buildings still stand today. The discovery at Reeds Creek was followed by finds at Bullshed, Stanley, Myrtleford and El Dorado. It became known as the Ovens Gold Field after the river it was situated on. One of the methods of gold recovery used was hydraulic sluicing. Hydraulic sluicing required large amounts of water as well as structural engineering to harness the power of the water. In the early 1890s at Woolshed Creek, dredging began. 
For the next 60 years, bucket dredges and sand and gravel pumps were extensively used in the area. People from every corner of the globe came to the area, but during the 1860s, a large part of the population were from China. Many of them were employed by the sluicing companies, whilst others worked their own small claims. They were not allowed to live in the town, so they lived in a campo on the outskirts, with their own shops and a temple. There are many significant Chinese sites around Beechworth to visit and appreciate the role that they played in its history. The Burke Museum is located in Lock Street and is a wealth of information about the town's golden past. Beechworth boasts a vibrant local food scene. There is a mix of shops, galleries and history of the local area can be explored through a guided walking tour. Jump on your mountain bike to explore one of the many mountain bike trails close by. Just a short walk from the centre of the town is Lake Sandbell, perfect for cooling off in the warmer months, or throw a line in and try your luck fishing. Each year, the Golden Horse View Festival takes place at Easter. The highlight is the reenactment of how in 1855, at the height of the gold rush, during the town's first election campaign, Daniel Cameron, one of the candidates, rode a horse that had solid gold horseshoes in the hope of impressing the voters. Needless to say, that would be one horseshoe that you would be very happy to dig up. Live Dave has just drawn the lucky winner of this week's viewer giveaway. Check the feed to see if you've won and we'll send you a DM to confirm. Congratulations. Well, that's all we have time for on tonight's show. I'll be live on Facebook between 8.30 and 9 to answer any questions you might have on tonight's episode. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den, and this has been The Mine Lab Show. Well, I'm a gold detective, gold fever, son of a gun.